can cause you to take over. The one that has every power in heaven and on earth. He said once has he spoken and twice have we heard that power belongs to God. Worship the one that can cause you to find favor. He said those that arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her. He said yeah, the third time has come. This is your time of favor. This is your time to walk in abundance. This is the time to move with the speed of the Holy Ghost. Tell him Lord I worship you. I give you praise because you are the greatest of the greatest. You are the best of the best. You are the mightiest of the mightiest. You are the one that was. You are the one that is. You are the one that is to come. Oh, once have you spoken. And twice have we heard that power belongs to God. Who is that speaks that it comes to pass when God has not commanded it? You said in your word, Thou shalt arise and have mercy. Father, for somebody here today, for all your children that are here today, because there's an overflow, because there's an overflow, because the blessings you give us is rolling over. My God and my Father, let your mercy speak for us. Let your mercy speak for us. Let your grace speak for us. As many as are the value of limitation, as many as are the value of frustration, as many as are looking forward to you for open doors. My Father, my God, you said it through the choir. You said it's a new level. You said we are taking over. Oh, for the King of Glory, at this time of beyond expectation. Thank you because in all the lives of your children, oh, you will do what you alone can do. For the Lord, what eyes have not seen. Oh, King of glory, the time is a time of multiple wonders. My Father, my God, my Father, my God, you will help us. We are ability fails, your ability will take over. In the name of Jesus, it's a time of overflow. And we are taking over. We are taking over. We are taking back what the devil has stolen. Nothing missing, nothing broken. In the name of Jesus, our Father, King of glory, thank you because you have given us all that pertains to life and godliness. In the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, we thank you. We give you praise, we give you glory. The way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness. Oh, generation to generation. Oh, King of glory, keep praising you. I yet know what serves you up. Oh, you. And he says, yeah, yeah, the mighty one, yeah, the holy one, we worship you, we exalt you, we magnify you, we give you praise, we give you glory, be thou exalted and magnified, in Jesus' name we pray. Our Father and our God, breathe upon your word today, on our own we can do nothing, <laughs> you are God all by yourself, you are the pillar that holds our lives. My Father, my God, you hold times and seasons in your hands. You call for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are, but you have chosen to call us your own. Father, we exalt you. We reverence you. We we'll bow before you. We we'll lay our crowns before you in reverence and in worship. Father, we exalt and magnify you. Speak to us today. And at the end of it all, let your name be glorified. Let yokes be broken. Let the captive be set free. Let there be salvation. Oh, kingdom of glory, do a new thing. Let there be restoration. Whatever the enemy has stolen, the counter of the counter of the caterpillar, my Father, God, restore in the name of Jesus. And every place that you have proposed for us, let it come to manifestation in our lives. Speedily in the name of Jesus. We say no more delay in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. To you be all the praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we we'll pray. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Please let be seated majestically. Hallelujah. I want to celebrate our beloved Pastor Grace. Our beloved Pastor Grace. Ubeya, our zona pastor. A woman of focus. A woman that loves God and serves God with all seriousness and passion. We love you and we appreciate you, man. Keep doing what you are doing. A woman that is focused on making heaven. A woman that stands for righteousness. We appreciate God. Is that all you can do for your pastor? <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And I want to appreciate the wonderful women coordinator, Pastor Mrs. Coco. Miss, and I, I, yes, I said I'll be calling her Kao Kao. You know, Kao Kao, Pastor Mrs. Coco, and her beloved team, our beloved Dickiness Joyce, my beloved sister, and all the wonderful women of this church. Throne of Grace is always home. It's a place that 
immediately we came to Windsor some nine, ten years ago. It's a place that I felt home. I felt comfortable in. And I've always loved Throne of Grace. I can remember when they did One Sisters program then maybe nine years ago or so. As I sat down there, I'm supposed to be a guest, so I'm supposed to be visitor, first timer. He made the women came out, I came to join them because this is my house. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So Throne of Grace is home. And I want to appreciate God for the wonderful sisters that have come with me today. Our wonderful women uh, president in the person of Sister Grace Amonia. Give it up for her. And our dear, our beloved minister with our beloved husband and the children, they all came together to give me moral support. I appreciate them. My beloved sister Agnes Abiono. God bless you all. I want to tell us that women are very unique. God has created us to be helpers. We are always helping. Right from the time God created us, he gave us an assignment to be helpers. We help our children. We help our husband. We help in society. We are always doing one thing or the other to add value to people. How would the world have been if there were no women? Extremely boring. A lot of things would have been disjointed. So give it up for the women. Thank you, Jesus. Women wear so many caps. We are the professionals. We are the wives. We are the mothers. We are the cooks, we are the lawyers, we are the doctors, we do so much. And then we are the drivers, thank you. <laughs> we are the ones that want to also minister to God and fulfill the purpose for which he has created us. Please let all women be seated and let all men rise, please. All men, please be on your feet. Yes. So give it up for the women. Begin to appreciate the women. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. You have your mothers as women. You have your wives as women. You have your sisters as women. Celebrate them. God is good. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. We are also unique. Please be seated. Thank you so, so very much. You know, yesterday we talked so much about the fully equipped woman. We said she's industrious. She pours into her family. She's a professional. She wants to fulfill the purpose of God for her life. There's so much she does. But you know, some people may be saying, oh, look at all what they have said. I don't think I can cope with this because I have limitations. I have baggages. I may not be, I can't, I can't achieve all this that has been said about the virtuous woman. We looked at Proverbs 31. The woman is industrious. The woman is hardworking. She's kind. She takes care of her household. She loves God. She serves God. She pours into her family. She just does so much. And you say, oh, is it possible? I have limitations. I mean, I have, my background is not so good. I've been told I cannot go so far in life. But I want to tell you, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than you can ask or think. Our sister told us, Sister Lillian, she had a child that was autistic. But she turned her lemons to lemonade. Yes. Some people could have been depressed. And they would say, what have I done to offend God? She said she even went through those moments. At the end of the day, she did practical nursing in St. Clair. It wasn't accepted at the University of Windsor. And she went for the whole program in University of Windsor. I remember those days. I met her one time around the University of Windsor when she was still in school, struggling. She said, oh, this nursing is tough. But today, she's a registered nurse. She turned her lemons to lemonade. Don't allow the enemy put you down. <laughs> Let me tell you this. No matter what you go through in life, God is able to lift you up, clean you up, and make you fulfill purpose. Remember, there's a purpose for which he has created you. Joyce Meyer, your background could have been worse than that of Joyce Meyer. A woman that was abused. Not just that she was abused, her mother did not stand up for her. What a mother. You will not be such mothers in Jesus' name. She said one day her father saw, her mother came from shopping, and she, she saw the father abusing her, and she just closed the door and walked away. Of course, the mother had mental health issues later because she was just bottling it up. But today, God has used her to be a, an evangelist all over the world. God has used her. In fact, her books, her, her, some of, her, her, her messages have been interpreted in about 100 languages because God uses the foolish things of the wise to confound, foolish things of the world to confound the what? The wise. Somebody told her you cannot do this. It's not even, it wasn't even common in her time for women to minister. 30 years ago, they celebrated their 30 years in ministry. They said you have no personality for TV, you have no money, nobody knows you, you have no experience, 
but look at what God brought out from her. And I want to tell you this. <laughs> Wherever you may be at now, God is able to do for you exceedingly, abundantly. God does not, he does not waste words. He said exceedingly. He also said abundantly. More than you can ask, think, or imagine according to the power that worketh in you. Tell your neighbor, say, activate that power. <laughs> There's a power that worketh in you, my brother. There's a power that worketh in you, my sister. You need to activate that power. He said, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what has not come into the heart of man, what he has proposed to do in your life and in my life. And that's why I like the song. Even thank God for where he has put me now. And I tell God, I say, without me, you, I can, you, can, you, I can do nothing. My dear brothers and sisters, it's not like I just woke up and I became so a lover of God, somebody that's passionate for God. I made my own mistakes. The present business that I'm doing now, that we are doing now, we started in 1998. In the first three, four years, I had a friend of, uh, uh, that was, we were together, we were doing it, although we loved God. Because even from 1998 to 2000, I went to Bible college and I started that business. And we, in the first few years, we said, no, we cannot go for the Holy Ghost Congress because that was our busy time. In the business that we do, uh, December time is the time that we stock up our warehouses to January. And I'm like, no, we cannot leave, but we have to be there so that we can move everything into the warehouses and all that and, and all that. And then we saw that things started going down. We remember we loved God. We went to the Bible college while the business started for two years. Then Redeemed Christian Church of God had not even started the Bible college in Zaria, where we're in Kaduna, Nigeria. But we went into another Bible believing church. We started with their Bible college and we did it for two years with night videos every week and all that. But then along the line, we're like, okay, we won't, we won't attend some programs, but we won't attend some programs. And then we saw everything going down and we learned the hard way. Tell your neighbor, say, don't learn the hard way. <laughs> that thing that was giving us joy before we know it started going down. And at the end of the day, we're in depth. It wasn't funny. But the God that is the God of mercy. The God that is the God that doesn't leave you all by yourself, especially when your heart is seeking after him. He pulled us out of the pit of death, and we learned our lesson. We learned our lesson. And from then on, we put God first. We put God first. That relationship with God is the most important thing. I tell you, because you can achieve all on earth. It's only God that gives the blessing that makes it rich and added no sorrow. <laughs> you can have all the money. At the end of the day, you have sorrow with it. Of what use is the blessing? So I want to tell you today that no matter the limitations, we heard from Pastor Grace yesterday about the eagle. The eagle needs, uses his strength to soar above challenges, to soar above the wind. You need the strength of God. You need the strength of God by being close to God. By having a relationship with God. By making time for God. By making time for the things of God. And I tell you, he has fully equipped you. You are capable of doing all. He has, he, he, there's nothing he has told you to do that is impossible. He's not a wicked God. He's only a wicked person that gives you an assignment and doesn't give you the grace to do it. His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. As you ask him for the grace, he will do for you exceedingly abundantly in Jesus' name. So we're going to look at two women. Despite their challenges and limitations, they were able to soar above the challenges of life. And they went through the process. Tell your neighbor there's a process. There's always a process. When the eagle is flying, the eagle, baby eagle, the, the, the mother eagle set, throws down the uh, baby eagle to fly. And then the baby eagle starts going down and crying and trying, and it's going to fall to the earth. What happens? The mother eagle comes and picks it up and takes it back. But does the mother eagle now say, or the baby eagle say, ah, I'm, I don't want to fly anymore. I don't want to learn how to fly anymore. Is it possible? When your child is crawling and is falling, or standing or trying to walk and is falling, do you, and then, you know, because you fell, don't walk again. That child has become a problem. So there's a process for you to get to where God wants you to get to. So you must be patient and go through that process. Serve God with a pure heart. He said in Nathaniel there was no guile. Enough of hypocrisy. Enough of one leg, one, one leg in, one leg out. He, what did he say? He, he, Elijah told the prophet, that if God be God, serve him. If God be God, serve him. Enough of hovering between two opinions. 
God will help us in Jesus' name. Now, grace is what we need, and the Lord will give us that grace in abundance in the name of Jesus. So two women, Ruth and Esther. These women, look at Ruth, for example. Imagine a woman married. She was from a cursed country. She married a man from a blessed country that came to that country when there was famine, and then the man died. And this lady, in spite of all her limitations, she became one of the women in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine that? From that level of despair, of frustration, of sorrow, what are the things she did? What are the strengths in her? What are the virtues in her that made her soar above all her negative situations. And I want to speak to somebody today. Whatever it is that you are going through, as long as you hold on to God, the Lord will show you mercy, clean you up, and lift you up in the name of Jesus. Remember, there's a new level. There's an abundance of joy. There's an abundance of favor waiting for you. Eyes have not seen. Remember, ears have not heard what he has in store for you. As long as you put him first. As long as you have the right relationship with him. As long as you seek first. Matthew 6, The kingdom of God and his righteousness. All other things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Esther was another person, an orphan. Imagine an orphan. I mean, she was living with her uncle. What was her uncle? A gatekeeper. The CV was very, the resume was very, quite low, right? A gatekeeper. But Esther became a queen. Not just a queen, but a favored queen. Hallelujah. And that's why the word of God says, in Psalm 102, 13, it says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her has come. I say to you today, today is your set time of favor in the name of Jesus. Today is your set time of favor. Hallelujah. What are the characteristics in them that made them to shine? And before I go to those characteristics, I want to tell the single women today, don't go for what a man is driving, but go for what is driving a man. Not for what a man is driving. <laughs> don't be materialistic. You can also work to achieve greatness. And you both complement each other to achieve greatness. Every spirit of covetousness in our life, the Lord will uproot it in Jesus' name. Do you know some men, some, some, some women have married the wrong husbands and they truncated their destiny. You know that you are a woman of purpose, fully equipped, spiritually, financially, materially, body, soul, and spirit. How can you now settle for somebody that will truncate your destiny? Because you are looking at what he has. You are going after a yo-yo man that has nothing to offer. And then at the end of the day, he will suppress you. There was this architect way back in Nigeria from where I come from. There was this architect. She married the wrong man. And this man said, immediately he married the man. He said, you will not walk again. Sit down, take care of the children. Somebody say, ha. Uh -huh. That is it. He said, you will not walk again. Then she, he was rich, he was taking care of her, but the woman was not fulfilled. How can I just go to all these years and at the end of this school, I will not be able to practice my profession? She was frustrated. But anyway, she sat down and said, well, let her keep her marriage. And then they, they, they had a project. The man decided that they should build a house. They wanted to build a very big house, a mansion. And then all the architectural skills in her came alive. She started designing. She started uh, supervising the project, going out very excitedly. Do you know that this man saw her doing that? He saw her excitement. She was always going out, going to supervise the project, making sure the engineers were doing the right thing, you know, conforming to the design. At the end of it, he told her, stop the supervision. Grounded her again. That is what you will do if you have married the wrong person. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. And anyone that is in that bondage, the Lord will set you free in Jesus' name. And it's not by divorce, so you will pray and pray and pray and tarry in the presence of prayer until he will change. And as many to us are wicked wives, the Lord will deliver the men in Jesus' name. Uh -huh. You know, for us as human beings, you cannot change anybody. You can't. And changing people, people don't change overnight. Just keep tarrying the place of prayer. And the Lord will show mercy and change the heart of that person. Because God wants to, God always wants to walk with our will. He's a God that gave us free will. He's not the God that is autocratic and says, you know, uh -huh, no. He wants you to come to that position where you change. So be patient. If you're in that negative situation, God will change your story for good in Jesus' name. So number one virtue in these women, Esther and Ruth, is that they had 
a vision, especially Ruth. Ruth came from a coast country. Her mother-in-law was already deflated, lost two sons, lost her husband. But she had a vision. She saw something in Naomi that made her want to follow Naomi to where? Bethlehem. Does it make sense for somebody to lose her husband and still follow her mother-in-law to a, 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 another country? She went from the known to the unknown. Ruth had a vision. Do you have a vision for your life? Do you have a vision for your family? Do you have a vision for your children? Or are you just thinking of the temporal things now? May God open our eyes and help us to fulfill that purpose for which he has created us in Jesus' name. Ruth was looking for a place where she could fulfill purpose and make meaning out of her life. And the Lord opened her eyes to see that Naomi was the key to her success. And she went with Naomi. Jochebed saw that Moses was a goodly child. And she said she kept him there. She didn't allow him to be killed. She kept him there until he fulfilled destiny and became the great Moses we all know. Number two, have faith in God. Hebrews 11:6 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please God. Tell your neighbor it's impossible. It's impossible to please God. For those that come to God must believe that he is. And it's a rewarder of them that what? Diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. We of the Christian faith, our own faith is not a believing in sin. Our own is what? Believing in sin, not sin is believing. You know the word says sin is what? It's not like that for us. Because God called those things that be not as though they were. So we must have faith in God. These women had faith in God. Naomi had, Ruth had faith in God. And it's that faith in God that made her to look at the virtues in Naomi. I'm sure the virtues of, the, the, the virtues of a virtuous woman were in Naomi. And she said, mm, the way this woman serves God and loves God in spite of her predicament, I will follow her. And she followed her. And then do you know, number three, have focus. Do you know that people must have been laughing at her when she was following Naomi? She looked really stupid. You have lost your husband. You said this family even has bad luck. And you are following her again to her country, leaving the known to the unknown, leaving on certainty for certainty. Does it make any sense? But because she was a woman of focus, she did not allow what they were saying to derail her. So please have focus. Tell your neighbors, have focus. Have focus. Somebody said, the more you focus, the more focus you give an idea, the better the idea becomes. The more focus you give an idea, when you are focused on something, God has given you a vision, and you are focused on it, you meditate on it, you pray about it, you are thinking about it, the more that focus becomes great. So the more you dwell on it, the more you ponder on it, the more you meditate on it, the more God will give, give you divine ideas to bring it to fruition. And the Lord will cause all our dreams to come to fruition in Jesus' name. I cannot hear your amen. amen. The backbiters were laughing at her. But who cares about the backbiters? They will always remain at the back. That's why they are backbiters. I hope you know that nobody can argue with success. <laughs> because when God finishes with you, they will come and rejoice with you. They that laughed at you, they will come and what? Rejoice with you and share your testimony. That's fine. That's fine. So you, don't, you need to be focused. Stay focused and trust God for what you want. Follow it. Go through the steps that you need to go through to get to where God has ordained for you. Pray about it and do all that is needed. That's the way Ruth was. Be hardworking, number four. Be hardworking. The virtuous woman was hardworking. I don't want to bore us again with all we, we said she, she was full of industry. She was hardworking. She was resourceful. And at the end of the day, she loved God. She served God. She was also kind. She was good with her words. She took care of herself. These are all the virtues that these women had. Be hard working. There's no place for the lazy. There's no place for the idle. It's not everything you can go for. It's not every function you can attend. Learn to say no. It's, a, it's strength to say no. Sometimes you need to sit down and meditate. Take care of your wife, your, sorry, your, 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 your family, your husband, your children, your career. God. You need to focus on the right things. Do the right things at the right time. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 29, it says, Sit down a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before what? And not before mean men. Mentorship. The place of mentorship is very important. You need to have a mentor. I hope you know that Naomi was Ruth's mentor. Your mentor has something that you may not have everything you want, but it has something that will take you to that next level. 
I even told my son when he was starting his engineering profession in the U.S., I said, have a mentor. Those mentors will navigate you. They will tell you when there's opportunity. They will tell you when there are openings. And that's how it is in the spiritual. Have a mentor. It was Naomi's mentorship that made Ruth be, be part of the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because she told, she followed her, number one. After Ruth followed Naomi, when Naomi got to the point where she wanted Ruth to link up with Boaz, she's the one that told Ruth what to do. She told the exact time and what to do. So you see how the benefit that came from that mentorship of Naomi. So have a mentor. What about Esther? Esther's mentor was who? Mordecai. Mordecai, the gatekeeper. Mordecai is the one that knew, because he was the gatekeeper in the king's palace, he knew that women were being called to do what? They wanted a virgin to come and contest to be the wife of the king, right? She told her to register. She registered for it, and then when they were going to destroy the Jews, what happened? It was Mordecai that still came to her and told her what to do. Hallelujah. So she did not despise him. You know, some of us, when we get to the top, coming to church, doing things of God is no more a priority. But when we need something, we come to church, we look committed. At the end of the day, when we get those choice jobs and all those things, we leave. Who are you doing? You are doing yourself. So the place of mentorship is very, very important. Hallelujah. Number six, she was selfless. She was not selfish. She was not covetous. Esther, when Esther was asked, they asked Esther. Esther found favor with the Enoch, the Enoch, uh, the Enoch that took care of the king's concubines. And then the Enoch told her, she now went to meet that one and said, what does the king like? He said, he told her the oils the king likes. All that, they, they put everything before the women, gold, diamonds, and all that. Some people were picking diamonds, you know, because of the spirit of covetousness in there, they were picking, they didn't, they didn't have that wisdom to go and meet the eunuch, to say, what does the king like? He just likes some particular perfumes. And by the time they used it on Esther for a couple of months, about 12 months, by the time the king saw her, it was a concluded matter. Because she wasn't covetous. The Lord will deliver from every spirit of covetousness in Jesus' name. Somebody was telling me the other day, she said, I mean, you know Nigeria, there's so much hardship in Nigeria, so they now gave palliatives in church. And the head of the palliative committee kept like 10 to himself. So because they saw him taking that thing, every other person took. At the end of the day, they did not go around. So why are we blaming our leaders? It's the same spirit that is in the low level, that is in the high level. So the Lord will deliver from every form of covetousness in Jesus' name. I hope such people are not in this church. They cannot be here. I trust you of grace. Hallelujah. Esther was wise. She knew the exact time to deal with Haman, the enemy of the Jews. I hope you know that when they first went, when she first called, the, 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 she went to the king. The king granted her favor. And then she told the king, I want to have a banquet. She had the first banquet. She had the second banquet. I'm rushing because of time. Because she had the second banquet. She did not rush in the, after the first banquet to say, ah, I want to deal with him. And she waited until the second banquet. She followed the leading of the Holy Spirit. How many of us are following the leading of the Holy Spirit? How many of us are sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit? When you go with the permissive will of God, eh? You get something, but you don't get everything. It's better to go with the word perfect will of God. Tell your neighbor, say, wait for the perfect will of God. And the, it was at the second banquet, she reported Haman to the king. And the king said, go and hang Haman in the gallow that he has set for Mordecai. These women are women that had time with God. These women are women that made time and put God as their priority. They made time for God. They were wise. In conclusion, the fully equipped woman is a woman of vision, is a woman of faith, is a woman that is morally upright. Because Ruth, even though she lost her husband, she was not going up and down looking for men that would see her in um, Bethlehem and attaching themselves, attaching herself to those men and trying to show herself before those men. She did not do that. She waited for Naomi's prompting. She did her job diligently in Boaz's field until it was time. Are you going about committing sexual immorality, adultery, fornication in the church? The Lord will deliver us from such in Jesus' name. So the fully equipped woman is a woman of vision, a woman of faith, a woman that is morally upright, a woman of focus. 
a woman that is hardworking, and I'm sure that applies to the men as well. Fully equipped in Christ, you need to have all these virtues. Selflessness, not covetous. Wise, humble, loves the Lord with all their hearts, and asks God for grace and receives it. Please, let's be on our feet. Let's begin to appreciate God for his word. Let's give him praise. And if you are here today, all the virtues of this fully equipped woman cannot have any meaning to you if you are not born again. And so if you are not born again, you have never accepted Jesus into your life as your personal Lord and Savior. Can I see your hands up? Can I see your hands up? God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. Can I see your hands up? You are here today in the midst of the children of God, and you are not born again. I want to tell you that at a point in our lives, we all made the decision to follow Jesus. You are here, you are not born again. Can I see your hands up as we pray? Hallelujah. 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 There's nobody here, we believe that we are all born again. Just begin to thank God for your salvation. Say, Lord, I thank you for saving my soul. I thank you for calling me out of darkness into your marvelous life. I thank you for how you have been helping me. Oh, King of glory, I thank you, Lord, for your grace upon my life. I thank you, Lord, because you have fully equipped me, my God and my Father. In every area of life, you have given me strength of character. You have given me strength in every area of life. Thank you for equipping me spiritually. Are you talking to God this morning? Thank you for equipping me financially. Thank you for equipping me materially. Thank you for equipping me physically in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's say, Father, help me to find my place of calling and purpose in the name of Jesus. My God and my Father, help me to find my place of purpose. Help me to find my place of calling in the name of Jesus. You have created me for a purpose and you have fully equipped me for that purpose. My Father and my God, help me to find the place of my calling. Help me to find the place of my assignment in the name of Jesus and the grace to fulfill my purpose on earth. Father, I receive from you. I receive from you. You have told me that it's a new level you have told me that there's an abundance of favor. My God and my Father, help me to find my place of purpose. In the name of Jesus, Father King of glory, that grace to live a life of righteousness that will not hinder me from fulfilling my purpose. I receive it in the name of Jesus. That grace to put you first. That grace to love you more. Father, take my heart and let me love you. Draw me closer to you. Draw me closer to you. We sang the hymn this morning. Ancient words ever true. You have heard the word of God again this morning. Morning. Father, let the world make impact in our lives. Let the world transform our lives for good. Help us to put first things first. Father, King of glory, as we reference you, as we put you first, my Father and my God, do what you alone can do in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we receive grace from you. Great grace, Lord. Abundant grace, Lord. In the name of Jesus, tell God, Lord, that grace I need to be all you want me to be. To be all you want me to be. To be all you want me to be. Unless, Lord, I receive from you in the name of Jesus. And that I say, Lord, that at the end of my rest here on earth, you will come me worthy to reign with you. Because the word of God says, what does it profit a man to gain the word and lose his soul? Are you praying? Are you talking to God this morning? And say, Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, help me. On my own, I can do nothing. On my own, I can do nothing. Grace to love you. Grace to please you. I receive, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your word about the fully equipped woman and all the virtues and characteristics you have placed in her. And in all of us as your children, my God and my Father, you said you have given us all that pertains to life and godliness. Help us to walk in that realization and manifest your great grace upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, King of glory, I commit everyone into your hands this morning. The men, the women, the, the single mothers, even your married sisters, the mature sisters that are trusting you for their own husband. The women that are trusting you for the fruits of the womb. My God and my Father, in your mercy, in your mercy, in your mercy, meet each and every one of us at the point of our need in the name of Jesus. You have said that this time is a time of beyond expectations. My God and my Father, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, do for each and every one of us gathered here today in the name of Jesus and cause us to know who we are in you and take our place in you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for grace. 
Thank you, Lord, for great grace in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the grace to love you more and draw closer to you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let the living shout hallelujah.